Uh, first and foremost, hello everybody. Welcome. Sorry for the uh, technical difficulties. Um, we're what we're going to do today is kind of a session zero part two, uh, and then depending on how much time is left, uh, the, the, I think the hope is to do like a first half is getting things set up, uh, and then the second half we may start moving into some of the story. Um, but that's kind of up to uh, Creed, our dungeon master, what he wants to do. Uh, as always. Uh, thank you for being here, and this has been kind of a weird start, so I'm just going to hand it back over to Creed. Uh, go ahead. Let's do this. Let's play. I don't have my character All right, sheet. so before I start, does anybody have any particular questions about the rules? Oh, you roll the dice and hope to get as high as possible, right? Okay. So when I will say, when it comes to things like combat... A thing I'm going to do a lot of is ask you, like if you go up to a wall, I'm going to ask you quite often, is are you going to use that as cover or concealment? I don't care if it's a concrete barrier, a shield or what. Um, I'm going to ask you how you want to use it um, because the rules have different what does and what concealment does. Um, and you, can, you, you can't use them together, but you can use them separately if, if that's what you want. If you want to be concealed, um, you can do it that way. Or if you want to use it as cover, there's like levels of cover in Starfinder. And we will, I just want to put that out there before we get into any combat in the game. So that being said, any questions about that? Uh... I think we'll probably have questions about it and we'll just have to kind of there. tackle it as we get to some of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I just want to let you guys know. Um, I have a question. What you got? Uh, Creed. Me. If you were having to explain Starfinder to someone who only knows D&D 5e, what are the five key things that you would explain to them? Five key things that I would explain to them that are different or similar? Different. Or... If there's like a big one, you're going to be like, look, this is going to be the same both ways, but I'd say different. Having never played this as a player and having just read the books and this is purely like a theoretical, like, like what I read, okay, I imagine it this way. Um, bear in mind, there's always things that you can do. There's always, there's like common actions like trip. Uh, where, where's mm -hmm. the book? Um, I just posted an actions cheat sheet in the Starfinder yeah. chat. Like you can always charge, covering, fire, faint, fight defensively. That is not something that is like stuck to like one class. Mm -hmm. um, very often you can just do things that have nothing to do with your class. Sunder, reposition, grapple. Um, that's one thing. A, a lot of the diff I, I've really dug into like the more combat rules than anything else. Um, I was about so that to say, that's a lot of combat just, stuff. Just remember that there are common actions that everyone can do, and if you see something that your, like, soldier is doing, bear in mind, you can probably... Um, the second thing... Oh, I just had it in my head. That'll come back to me, I hope. Um, let's see. Just had it. I really like the fact that there are these kind of universal combat actions, because it... it... It takes you out of that shoehorned do what your you know do what your class says you have to do kind of thing. Right, it, right. It gives you a lot more a lot more freedom. Like I, I'm I'm excited to use some of this stuff as a spellcaster. That I don't know. <laughs> like I could charge. I can do a bull rush. Like it's it's kind of mm -hmm. silly, but the fact that I could do it could be pretty thematic as well. So oh, absolutely. That's the kind of absolutely. stuff I'm excited about. Oh my gosh, it's bugging me. I had another thing that I was going to say, and I just lost it. That's okay. Um, Second thing, kind of put me on the spot there. Um, things that are different. I toss in as a offering. the The armor class feels pretty different to me. Five E is basically just straightforward AC, whereas Starfinder has energy armor class for like plasma weapons, kinetic armor class, obviously for, you know, normal slugs that hit you. Then there's armor class versus combat maneuvers, and then you can have damage resistance and then other resistances. So there's a little more complexity to the armor going on. Mm -hmm. And like spell but, resistance. I was reading up yeah. on that today. I didn't know about it before today. 
Mm -hmm. And it's not relevant until it's relevant. You get hit with a plasma gun. You're like, what's my uh, resistance to this? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember what the second thing was now. Remember that movement is now an action. Mm. Like, like, you know, 5e, it's just kind of like this number that you drain. You can do all your actions and you can just drain that movement number until you've run out of movement. But in Starfinder, you, you use it as like a separate action. Like it is your movement action which means you can't split, move, and fire, which means you like, I'm gonna pop out, shoot my gun, and go behind total, and they can't hit me. No, like once you declare your movement action, whatever it is, you have to do it completely until you're done with it, like just like you would an attack action. Um, I have a third thing that's very different about this game. Um, it is based around having one attack. Um, Whatever that attack may be, it may be like a full action, a, a basic action, a swift action, which is equivalent to a bonus action. Um, it's based around one attack. So as you look at like the weapons and stuff, a lot of your um, weapons like they go up exponentially in like what your dice rolls are, like immense rolls. Like you just roll one die, that's it. Whereas five E does like, oh, you're going to attack five times as the fighter. That's how we get your your damage up with a one D eight weapon. No, like. Starfinder will just say, no, you just roll 8d8 on one attack from your 8d8 weapon or whatever. Um, the fourth very different thing is um, healing is very, very difficult. Uh, I would say if, except for, of course, there's the whole stamina thing. I, when I, whenever I'm describing some damage, if you, oh, actually, this is very good. Like if you're attacking a creature, and I describe it as like, you didn't really hurt him. And that's, it's not gonna be described as like, oh, he has like this massive resistance. Like I'll probably describe, you know, him getting hit in the armor and it doesn't penetrate as him taking stamina damage. And once you actually start hitting their health pool is when you're like, okay, he's bleeding. Mm, okay. Cause like, if you think about it, like if, if I were to come up and punch you in the face, I probably, it would be painful but I probably didn't like injure you. And, and so that would be like a, a blow to your stamina. But like, if I were to keep doing it, eventually something, a blood vessel is going to break. You're going to start bleeding. You might, you might have a broken nose. That's when you start digging into the health pool. And, I'll, and I'm going to work to just provide things kind of like that to kind of fit the, make the narrative fit the mechanic. Does that make sense? I'm into that. Yeah. Um... Yes. I did. I I I I, I forgot. I, I had a thought, and it's just gone now. You did what I just did. It's, it's going around, apparently. Um. The destiny rules. Um. Does that is going to be the one thing I would love to try out tonight? Does anybody need me to link that again? You can. Yes. Yeah. You, absolutely. Uh, Wait. Are, we're not playing tonight, are we? We may. Oh. See that that's why I asked. I like my understanding was this is just a second like session. Yeah. Uh, my understand I I thought I thought the <laughs> I thought the plan was we were gonna do like finish up our characters for a little bit and then do like a mock uh I think even when someone said like non canon just test. A, a, a like test run to make sure we kinda had it figured out for next test Friday. Combat. Yeah, test like a combat. test combat. That's that's what I thought was happening. Yeah, that's that's. I think we all agree. It's just not. I don't. It's just non a non canon play. We still have a lot to talk about, though, for just like session zero stuff. Let's say. Okay, so with that said, I will go ahead and just describe where you will start um, on the planet of Castrovel, and. Um, I won't get too much into like the quest I have prepared, um, so that way you guys can kind of just know where you're at and then discuss how you got there, how you know each other, and all that. So, yeah, I, I apologize if I butcher the name of this city. You are on the planet of Castrovel in the, on this in the city of Kabarat, the shining jewel of the Western Sea. Kabarat is arguably the greatest Lashunta city state, city state, and the planet's largest spaceport where the Yarrow River cuts through the sea cliff. Here, let me get the, there you go. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It is a, glittering shells rise up to cradle 
a modern metropolis nestled among venerable structures dating to the civilization's beginnings. Lady Marana Kesh, a Lashanta, and her chief consort and battle leader, Gr Granteus, also a Lashanta, rule the city from the, three, from the threefold house, the city's capital. They fight quite a quiet but desperate battle to maintain, maintain traditional governments and keep all of Asana from becoming a corporate free-for-all. Visitors of the city often arrive in the spaceport at ship's end, passing by soldiers, mercenaries, training legend in the legendary battle yards and scholars debating on the steps of the city's numerous great universities before arriving in the bright streets, which form the city's commercial center. The city also has several public use, I don't even know what that word is. I've never read that before. A-I-U-D-A-R-A, I-U-D-A-R-A, never heard that word before. I don't know. That link to other settlements. I'm going to look that up. We're learning today. Grammar lessons? Uh, or, or, it's, 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 vocabulary. it's not a real word. Elf gates or Iordura. I can't spell it. I can't spell oh, it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a Pathfinder thing. That's why I didn't recognize it. Um, yeah, it's a port city. About 800,000 people, 70 percent of which is Lashunta, 5% Elf, 5% Human, 4% Shuran, 4% Isoki, 3% Half Elf, and 9% Other. It's an autocracy. Um, to fit the current setting, we will say that it is currently under martial law, considering the fact that it is, um, the, the whole planet of Castrobel is currently at a, at a war between the Lashunta and the Formian aliens. So, so this is with wartime that said, on this planet. Say what? Wartime on this planet, then. Wartime on the planet, yep. Between the Lashanta and the Formians? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. The Formians are like hive mind bug people. Ooh. I feel sympathy well, for them as a Trox. <laughs> Is our Trox um, hive mind bug people? They are just bug people. Creed has bug people. Yeah, we oh. are. We are not hive mind, but we are bug people. Awful. How could you say that about my fellow bug people? Oh, I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think we could probably just for catch people up, describe our, the characters that we're thinking of playing, and then we could probably discuss like the whole group setup thing. Okay, I've got uh, some ideas. Uh, Trox, why don't you start us off? Right, so I'm playing Cry Cryptus, who is a Trox soldier. He was a former colonist and devout worshipper of the standard Trox god, who was, da -da -da -da, who is, is Hylax. And Hylax is very into peace and diplomacy and harmony, and Cryptus used to believe in that firmly. But something uh, has soured his opinion on peace and love, um, something related to his colonial background. And he now finds himself in the service of Captain Jin. Trox is very aggressive and very hostile, but very obedient, like a murder hobo on a leash, basically. Heavily armored with his reaction cannon, he does what the captain tells him to do. Uh, he is terrible at diplomacy on account of rolling a four for that stat. <laughs> uh, but he's a big boy. He has lots of constitution to eat up... Uh, wounds for other people because his fighting type is guard and so as guards level up they can actually protect other characters so as an example if i'm standing next to captain Jin at a higher level i can actually take half of the damage for him or i can give him extra ac stuff like that so he's not there to dish out damage he's there to look intimidating and get hit okay uh so i'm playing an android we decided my, my name will be uh, uh passenger so Android uh, uh, named Passenger, who is a technomancer, um, he has he, he so so since I don't know a whole lot about Pathfinder, is Galorian the canonical uh, planet of Pathfinder setting? Yes. Yep. Okay. Pathfinder, so, like you, everything took place on Galorian, and I kind of just took that for our last campaign, the, mm -hmm. the whole Vecna thing. Gotcha. Um, I was just like, you know what, this is going to fit perfectly, and instead. In Starfighter, Galorian's supposed to be like gone, like it's just like hidden away by the gods, and no one knows where it is. Gotcha. But for our game, we know exactly where it's at, and it's the continuation. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. So I, I am an android 
built by um, a, a, probably a conclave of scientists um, on uh, Galorian, and we the, these androids were built for to be subservient, to be borderline a slave race. They're very much tools in the you know tools of that planet. Um, I have escaped that regime, um, and, and I, I, I have a sentience that seems unusual for other Galorian androids. It's now that I'm away from Galorian, I'm, I'm finding other androids that absolutely have this kind of sentience, but it's uh, a little bit new for me. So um, I would imagine that if I'm on Castrovel, it's probably because I'm this. This is probably where I found respite, where I have. Where I have hidden, probably from uh, stowing away on ships and eventually finding my way to this port city and, you know, getting in with the crowd and hopefully not getting caught. <clears throat> Patrick, what's your character all about? Well, I've been referred to as the captain, um, but I'm a Kasathan and I did choose the noble scion theme i had some help from some of our viewers and um i'm the theme itself does describe that you could be like the typical kind of nobility or it could just be like you know, famous politician or like a hero like you're, you're related to someone of running on and they haven't really decided which that is i don't know enough about kasathans to know if they have aristocracy or nobility or anything um but <clears throat> i don't know either way it'll it'll fit the theme the character will fit the, the the idea of having this name that carries weight means something um but other than that he's kind of a very well-rounded traveler i am the nomad type of kasafin and they're all about you know going out exploring finding their way through the packed worlds and uh i think operative is gonna fit that the best um i've had some discussions about whether i should be an operative or something else but i like the idea of being able to fill any hole that might be present in the group like letting you guys shine do what you do best and then i can you know, sneak in and be like oh let me take care of this because no one else can or you know something like that but that'll be fun um uh, just looking at the chat, uh, Patrick, do do you have a physical description of a Kasathan or a Creed? Do you have a picture of a Kasathan? I bet Creed has a picture, but we are forearmed, like Trox, my trusted bodyguard, who is also forearmed. Because, uh, you know, you can trust someone who has four arms. Um, someone who only has two arms, you don't really know what they're thinking, you know. <laughs> I mean, two arms and a tail is just suspicious. <laughs> um, mammalian, uh, reptilian, like, uh, do, do, do you look humanoid kind with of, the exception of four arms? Like, how would you describe it? Kind of like protossy. Oh, here we go. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Yeah. Yeah, you just did, so. They always keep their mouths covered because they're all about um, protecting against pandemics. Oh, topical. No, it's it's a it's a cold. <laughs> is that a real thing? It is. They always keep their mouths covered. I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, cool. Pull up, all right, Ashley, tell Very us nice. a little bit about your character. Uh, I'm playing a Vlaka, um, a Vlaka mystic that is a paranormal investigator. Uh, and uh. That's all I know. <laughs> Perfect. We are here to flesh that out. Perfect. Yeah. But now, Vlaka is that's the you, that is the dog race, right? Like you've settled on yes. dog. Yes. It is do do they all look a certain way, or can you can you are you, have you decided like a theme of dog? Like do you look kind of like a husky or like a Doberman? They, they do are like huskies essentially. They're they're, they're home planet of Lojack is dying it's out in the vast it's very very far away from any of the pack or soon to be packed worlds um it's a dying world it's basically going through some sort of, like the star is dying and so the planet is starting to freeze oh, wow. um and so yeah they're they're husky they're they're very cold evolved dog people 
Okay. Okay. Do you, do you have an idea, Ashley, as to like why you went the paranormal route? Like why your character has gone paranormal investigator route? Did 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 they experience something paranormal? Well, I like to think it's um, so the Velaka. There's a I think it said like there's a fifty percent chance that a Velaka is either born um, blind or deaf or both, and my block I decided is going to be deaf. So. I like to think that like they kept hearing things that they knew they couldn't be hearing because they're deaf and oh. like oh it's ghosts. Oh okay, okay. So they're deaf, but they're definitely hearing something, and that led them to ghosts, which led them to paranormal investigator. Is that the the train of thought? Yeah. I like it. Or, or they heard something at one point that. A lot know, the DM can do with that, and it's gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> so who are you gonna call? Laka. I'll leave. <laughs> yeah, get out. <laughs> leave. <laughs> so uh Jin and Cryptos Cryptus? Cryptus. 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 You two already know each other. Y'all have decided that y'all are gonna start this campaign befriended? Probably. Probably, but like well, we're we here could decide play. otherwise. Well, I will tell you, Patrick, you and I spoke the other day, and something that came out of that conversation that I didn't really realize about myself, that I that I that now that I know I'm kind of stuck to, all the D&D I've played has always started with, you know, five random people in a tavern, now they are bound by destiny to save the world. I am happy to avoid that trope. I would be very <laughs> happy to just... I, you would mention like us being in your employ, or 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 maybe all of us, you know, accepting this. I, I don't know, but if we, I'm I'm happy to know y'all in some way other than the awkward tavern meet. If we can, I would prefer it m myself. Is if either, um, <clears throat> Jin has employed you, like you work for him, or um there's some sort of mission that you guys decide you need to do together and you tell me um like you guys have agreed or you've known each other for years and it's like oh, we'll, we'll just work together as friends because we've known each other for 10 20 years or you know what something other than just like oh we happen to meet because that's yeah. how our other campaign started and that's how so, most campaigns start just throw your characters together and go yeah the the first idea I'd had, because I can't remember if I'd like claimed the captain role or not when we were talking about this. Yeah. But yeah, I'm the captain. I'm, I'm look, I'm the captain now. Um. So yeah, I was thinking like we could do the whole. I could have just hired you guys. Um. And you know, I've hired you based on like paying you a, a salary, giving you commission. Um, at like different rates and like salvage rights, things like that. But for the most part, everything else is like, you're my employees. So if someone comes up and says, I'll give you 15,000 credits to, you know, get me off world mm -hmm. immediately or whatever. It's like, yeah, I'm going to be paying you guys a couple hundred credits each, but the rest of it's mine. But on the other hand, it's like, oh, the ship needs a new engine or whatever. It's like, I'm not going to be like, all right, guys, open your wallets. Come on, open your wallets. We got to get a new engine. I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'm so the captain the of my ship. So the ratio you're thinking is a hundred credits to every fifteen grand is, is, is <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What your That's is. a what All is right. that? Point uh, seven five percent, point six six percent. So this is at, going to cause problems. As an eventually. Android used Not to servitude, that. I feel like you are paying me way more than I deserve. So I'm right. into that. I'm into that. So it, that, it, that, that, that hundred credits is more than I've ever been paid for anything in my life. I'm, I'm good with everything about that. I keep so, forgetting my Zoom screen has us all in like a different layout. I'm, I'm like, I'm pointing to Nick, but <laughs> on the Twitch, I'm pointing <laughs> off screen into the chat. <laughs> but um, Nick and I had said like, you know, 10%, 12% you're around there. That's one idea. I was pondering too for, for Cryptus, like Jin has come across Cryptus somewhere when he was sour and brooding from his bad experience and has picked up Cryptus. And Cryptus doesn't get paid. Cryptus is just in service to Jin. And Jin's like, oh, this is a good deal. I don't have to pay this guy. Except Cryptus comes and says, I need ammo for gun. 
And Jin's like, well, I guess I have to pay for that. <laughs> yeah. Alternatively, I was thinking, because Creed, you are giving us a spaceship, is that we could instead just be five people who've known each other long enough to trust each other and be business partners. And we all equally bought into like an LLC or something. The details don't is, matter. And is the fifth person the, the Velakan ghost? Yes. The four the of us. <laughs> no, you're like, there's, there's not five of us. I'm like, obviously the fifth person is a ghost of some cool. kind. <laughs> the four of us yeah. bought equal shares. So we all have an, oh, Justin, Twitch is down. The former owner what? of the ship. Oh, uh, it might be my end. I don't know. Twitch, your end. It's still working on it's me. It's my end. Yeah, Twitch is down. Me. Like, don't give me a heart <laughs> attack like that. <laughs> Since <laughs> motive check. That's what you should have done. <laughs> I'm terrible. Yeah, Androids cool. are terrible at sense motive. We, 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 get a, we, we get a negative two. We get a negative two to sense motive. I uh, I have a, a zero. Oh, apparently it froze for other people too. So, oh. but it, I'm it, negative. It's back up. So, I'm negative two. Do any of us sense motive well? <laughs> I do. I gotta say. I'm convinced that Starfinder is all about level oh, one. Now. Everybody sucks at everything because none of my. St I mean, even with better stats, it's not great. <laughs> a beer, a bar, really sucks yeah, everything. <laughs> five, five E, you are very strong. Starfinder, you are. We're level one so character. Does does Starfinder, like, what type of a space? What what type of space uh, trope is it? Like, is it where is this a space where a lot of it is corporations, like Blade Runner style, or is this more Star Wars where they're more planety? Like, what's what's the what's the lore of Starfinder space? To 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 put it very in a nutshell and describe it very badly, um, <laughs> it's actually very much more Guardians of the Galaxy. Where like magic and things still definitely exist, but okay. it's not very well. There's a lot of defined things, but I'll tell you, I'm gonna play it where there's corporations. There's gonna be elements of like the Blade Runner. There's gonna be elements of, um, you know, there's gonna be fantasy elements, obviously, because we have magic still. Um, there's gonna be Guardian of the Galaxy element. There's gonna be a very uh, Starship Cooper stuff. I, I'm gonna pull from all sorts okay. of science fiction and science fantasy. Um, there's even some Star Wars elements. I know the uh, Solarian class is is just a Jedi. It's I know I'm going to piss Jedi. off a lot of people when I say that, but it, it's just a Jedi. It's a lame it's what Jedi. It is. When you told me there was a Jedi class, I was excited, and then I read it, and I was disappointed. Because That's just, just my playstyle. That's just my playstyle. Don't hate me in the chat. So I'm sure people <laughs> love it, but but I, I, was, I, was, I, I was, I don't know. I don't know. I felt kind of weird about it. A lot of um, people feel a way about it. The... Uh, I feel like I had a follow-up question to that, but I guess... Yeah, there's, it, oh, it, it, I remember it, it, my follow-up question. So if it's Guardians of the Galaxy-esque, does that mean that the extent of a spacesuit for me could be a leather jacket and mask? I hope yes. But, yeah. <laughs> it, it, the, for the rules as written, that's kind of what I'm wearing. <laughs> yeah. I'm into that. Okay. Because there is a... Have, like, EVA suits and, like, battle armor be separate things, but that's not how the rules are written. Um... And that's not something I'm gonna. I'm really willing to change because it sounds like more of a pain in the ass. Yeah, I'm doing. happy to add complexity to D and D, but I feel like learning Starfinder. I want to keep the complexity as close to rules as written as possible. Right where it is. Yeah. So way up here when D and D's down. <laughs> so did we decide? Did we vote? Did anyone else have any ideas so, for like the group setup? Yeah. Any other? Oh. Yeah. I was just going to say, so far, my um, vote is being hired. Being hired? Yeah. You got one for hired. I vote I would hired. Like, I would like to nominate myself for first mate. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wish to challenge the Velaka to a duel, an honor duel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I have four arms. First off, how do you know each other? <laughs> are you voting for you were hired, or are you voting for you've known each other for years? And we're all in this together. We all have equal say. Uh, I'm voting just, for hired. I'm the captain has hired me. I'm loyal to the captain. Ashley, what is your what is your I mean, vote? I don't know because I can't think of a good reason the captain would hire 
Um, paranormal <laughs> a, investigator. A deaf paranormal <laughs> investigator. <laughs> you say that, but I'm looking at my sense motive. I'm looking at my perception. <laughs> I'm looking at my lack of mysticism. <laughs> So, so, wasn't there a particular crew member on the Serenity that really didn't have a place on a starship, but was hired to do the basic job of like, you're the face, you are going to talk to people because I am bad. You mean now, Inara? Yes, Inara had a job. Uh, Inara Except definitely had a job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's 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 my that's a beer a bar. Remember. Yeah, yeah, for the main, when we get everyone <laughs> at the table, character. that's who she's going to play. <laughs> well, that's what this is. This is where we're starting. Great. Um, so who's going to be first mate? Uh, hold up all the hands you can hold up. And we'll count. <laughs> I have four. <laughs> I don't know. You can't um, beat the loyalty of Avlaka. This truck doesn't get paid. <laughs> to the captain. I will say, um, I'm a really good listener. I'd like to think Captain tells both of us we're first mates. <laughs> what's what's my bluff bonus? Plus ten? Hmm. Is it really? <laughs> Through a four, you still need a science officer, an engineer, and an, um, let's see, captain, science officer, pilot, engineer. gunner. Honor. I'm a great engineer. I hit the engine. It works. Okay, so you're, maintenance. you're not the first mate. I'll take science <laughs> officer. We got a science officer there. Drox, I tell you, you're the, you're the first mate. But... Good, good. That's all I need. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so I mean, it sounds like we're going to do the whole I hire you guys kind of thing. Oh, you also need a pilot. I think the captain and the pilot are the same thing. Though, in this. Well, in combat, yeah, they do different things, but it'll work for now. Cryptus yeah, is happy to pilot with his negative two or three to piloting. <laughs> Level one. Oh, it's only negative plus one. Nine. I'm a great plus nine pilot. piloting. I'll pilot us. It's my ship. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we're gonna do that now, trucks, you've been my crew the longest time. Cryptus, you keep calling me like human. Human over there. <laughs> Trox, we've known each other the longest, I would say. And I think the Vlaken I hired next. And you helped convince me to not throw Passenger out the airlock because he stowed aboard the ship. So how long ago did that happen? <sighs> Just a roll of d4. That's how oh. many years. D4, d4, d4. I have a d4. Someone's vote. There's a second vote for me for first mate, by the way. Who oh, voted for oh, you? Hey, here, I got it. Be be better, better than a d4. Traitors. Better than, a, better than a d4. The first person that gives us a number between one and four will determine how long we've known each other. <clears throat> We have eight people. Hopefully and this someone's will be, just like trying to type out like all of the digits of pi. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. I like that. I like that idea. So what was what was decided? Uh, we're waiting on some a uh, four. We've known each other for four Wings years. Four? It's been four years. Four since years I ago, stowed away. you stowed away, and I was like, "I'm gonna throw you out the airlock." And the dog was like, "No, no, don't do that." I sense something. Here. Okay, so we're pretty, like a, we're pretty uh, tight knit already then. What has been a typical work week like on your ship for the last four years? Because obviously you guys have been together a while, but the campaign is starting four years after you meet. Um, obviously something different is going to be happening at the beginning of this time period where the game is starting. What was mundane or normal or just average about what would you guys do during those four years well i would say patrick if you bought the ship and it's your ship like what did you buy it for like is it a mining ship is it a trade ship what, like, what is it it 
it was probably billed to gin by the used it's a ship salesman. Horse. It's haunted as shit. Angularian. <laughs> how, how long ago, Creed, I think you have to decide this, how long ago was I able to get the ship from Galarian? Because it's a Phoenix Industries. Right, but it's an old ship. Like it's, it, You bought it used. Okay. So you could have got it four years ago, five, six years ago, but we're, we're going to say, you know, it, it's definitely a a hand-me-down. You definitely had to fix it up. It's it's a patchwork ship. It's a transport. It's from, I want to say it's 150 years since the Vecna thing, so it's, it's probably about a 50-year-old ship at this point. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Ashley, have you had a chance to look at languages at all for your character? No. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to say five years ago, we were on the planet Verses because it's a neat planet. And that's where I was able to, the three of us, uh, the Vlock and Trock, Cryptus and Jen, that's where I was able to get the ship from a used ship salesman. And I was like, oh yeah, we're going to get this and we're going to do like super awesome missions for like important people and make a lot of money. And, we and it hasn't really you? panned out that way. <laughs> yeah, you guys, I guess at the start of this campaign is when you'll get your first, like, this is going to be quite a bit of money yeah. situation. It hasn't, we've, yeah. we've just been keeping it together as best we can. I've probably had to, like, get money from my family at some point just to keep us flying or whatever. So Cryptus is, is technically the ship's engineer, but he's not actually very good at engineering. And so I have the feet percussive maintenance for thematic purposes, but I do a lot of hitting of the ship's engine to make it work. Um, and I'm actually proficient in engineering. So a lot of the times <laughs> you're hitting it, thinking that it's fixing it, but it's actually me coming behind you going. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me bang that dent out. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yes. Um, I also adhere to hierarchy, so I will adhere to the first mate's commands, but I'm very snarky and unhappy about it the entire time, like three years, four years later, still. <laughs> I'd like to imagine there's a pile of scrap or like multiple piles of scrap in like the engineering and whatever hangar, like whatever storage the ship has. And Trox was like, oh, don't worry, I'm going to fix up that, you know, hover car or whatever don't worry it'll i'll fix it up eventually but it's it's not even it's it's not even a thing <laughs> it's just it's just an un, unfinished oh, project oh yeah everywhere yes it's called his character messy and cluttered <laughs> there was a himself. hole in his uh porters before he moved in that's all i'm saying Listen, you have to use your burrow speed for something. <laughs> Wait, you have a burrow speed? Yes. And Ashley's character probably uh, stops me from burrowing too much into the ship. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Which character? Wait, which characters have a burrow speed? More than one of you have a burrow no, speed? No, me. Me, oh, but. Just you. Okay. Yeah, just him. I like to imagine the Vlaka persecutes me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into that. Rude first mate. What? I haven't told you to stop. I've just asked you to avoid all of the like necessary <laughs> wiring. <laughs> this is the comfiest spot though. This don't particular burrow in, don't burrow through the outer hole. That's you know the that's ship for your own safety. <laughs> the ship didn't have Jeffrey's tubes when you got it. <laughs> Flying uh, around in a Swiss cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Does the burrow speed let you go through metal? I feel like I'm really hung up on this burrow speed. I don't think it I'm specifies. Gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna but... play up my lack of sense motive and be like, "Oh yeah, no, no, that's that's Cryptus's tactical setup. You know, <laughs> if there are borders." 
Yeah. <sighs> I like it. Well, I've switched the roll 20 over to the insides of the ship, so you guys can claim a room. Hey. We get to claim a Wait, room? Where to roll 20? There's four bunks. I didn't know there was a roll 20 yet. Is our cargo bay full of water? Oh, no, I see what it did. <laughs> <laughs> Made it into a swimming pool. We need fresh water. Okay. Yeah, I, I bet that I bet the inertial dampeners uh, have to work overtime to keep that water still. The button for sign in. I'm gonna take the uh, the the northeast uh, bunk room number. Is there the captain? Uh, the room bunk. number seven. They're all room number seven. <laughs> Are we... I think I want to take the room below you, passenger. Okay. Is that a like? What's that connecting us? Is that a shower or something? I don't think it's a shower. I think it's just. I, I, I think it's just a. Uh, you know, like a hotel has the, the the rooms connected between two doors. I think I think that's it because there it looks like four looks like a bathroom, like a shared bathroom. Four yeah. is a bathroom. Four is a bathroom. Justin, is there any way you can make this bigger on the stream so people can see the map? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's. Uh... Taz, I remember Taz. That's my Taz. Oh man, okay. Five is a workshop. Six is medical. Four are the bathrooms. The galley is up. The ventral cargo bay is. Down. I don't know what up and down are on a ship. I don't remember. Uh, still be just up and down. Port and starboard are all the only important things. Uh, isn't it forward and aft? Forward, forward and aft, yeah, forward and back. So I'll take the forward uh, port crew forward. quarters. Next to the workshop and the escape pod. I always forget, which is, is starboard, starboard left or right? Starboard is right. Starboard well, is on right. a spaceship, it's all around. What? There's stars all around you. I hate. Get out! <laughs> I, I was remembering because uh, port, 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 and left have the same number of uh, numbers. Oh. Letters. Oh God, English. Same letter of numbers. Same letter. Numbers. You genuinely confused me, Patrick. This the galley. That's kind of a cool galley. Two's operations. I like it. So, so tell us, passenger, what do you get up to on a daily basis, other than fixing Cryptus's uh, messing with the engine? Um, well, I very likely spend a lot of time researching these new areas I never got to see before, and uh, reading books. Like I, every time that we encounter books, I, I my, my my room is just full of them. Um, and whatever the 150 years in the future's equivalent of like a record player is. Like I'm into books and music. I'm an angsty emo kid. Is your room like books. cluttered or is it very neatly organized with books? Um no, it's 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 meticulous. It's not cluttered. It's it, like everything has its own spot. I would actually go so it, I would actually say it's a little OCD. Like the uh, the books on the bookshelves, they don't touch. There's just like there's 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 little like millimeter gaps between each book. Exactly a millimeter. Oh yes, and I I'll, I'll adjust them as necessary. I like how Cryptus's room is the only one with the double bed, the one that's big enough to like actually fit him. <laughs> oh, that's, that's probably the captain's quarters too. The things no, I, I do. You got the one with the I'm confused. The, the bathroom next to there has a double sink. Yeah, I think that's okay. meant to be for like few people to share. I think passenger shares that one with me. Mm -hmm. Are those lifeboats above our rooms? I think so. I think they're shuttles. They might be just like shuttlecraft. 
Yeah, it's shuttlecraft, escape pods, however you need them. Mm. So, Nick, you asked that question about passengers' room. I'd like to say Jen's room. Because I just thought of this. He's too proud to ever let you guys know if there's money troubles. Like, he's too proud to ever let you know. It's like, oh, we're bankrupt or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I've got no money. Work. So, I don't let you guys in my room. But if you did ever get to see it, you ever got to look into it, you would see nothing. There's nothing there. Like, yeah, my stuff's put away in the closet or whatever, but there's no personal items. There's no, like, art or decorations or, like, interesting things. Very Spartan, but I've not had, by choice. I've probably had to sell stuff to be able to pay you guys. So I'm pretty desperate for some money here in Castroville. I, I would say that if, if the rest of the group is up to this, the captain thinks we don't know that. The captain thinks we don't know that. The captain thinks he's done a good job hiding money woes. But meanwhile, we're like, we know. We're just not calling him out on it because he's a pragmatic scion mm -hmm. or whatever the heck you are, and we don't want to call you out nope. on it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's like the cargo bay is always empty, you know. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, so we've got an OCD android. We've got a Money Troubles prideful captain. Um... What what uh, what about what about you, Cryptus? You got any uh, character quirks we would know about each other after four years? So, probably you you initially think like when you encounter him, he's sort of messing around in engineering and seems kind of kind of messy. He leaves shavings, you know, metal shavings around and whatever. Um, you're like, okay, this guy's just kind of you know no discipline to him. But you actually notice as soon as any order is given to him, he immediately jumps to it like you like there's some soldier discipline in him he gets his gear on immediately he's very quick to to take command so you you have a sense that whatever he was doing in his past um his colony work it was in a a guard soldier position of some kind he doesn't like to talk to it and clearly seems uncomfortable around the subject um and you get the sense it's not anything profound other than he he is ashamed of not succeeding at whatever he was doing back then so it's not like some deep, dark backstory. He's just not proud that he was not successful. So he's a little, he's a little run down in his personal life, but he's a professional when he needs to be professional. Okay. And then, um, wait, what is your Vlaka's name? Did I miss that? No, I haven't picked one yet. <laughs> Well, we gotta pick a name. I know. Okay, look, I had to go back to work starting this week, and it's been a time. I, I propose Lassie. Well, you know what I proposed. Overruled. It was, no. it was immediately overruled. Yeah. Okay, so you may not know a name, but do you have an idea as to what a what a what a what a character uh, quirk might be after having gotten to know you for four years? Um, she's, uh, on a lot of medication. Okay. I mean, she, she can literally, like, see and hear, you know, lots of dead people. It's a terrible time. It's... So, so, I have a question. Like, is this something that hit you, happens all the time, just, like, out of nowhere? Or is it something that rarely happens where you go, okay, I... I'm hearing this because before before you had explained that yeah I hear dead things I'm just, I was planning on doing that anyway. Um, <laughs> so is this something that's a normal occurrence to where if I were described like oh you hear the scream down the hallway but you're dead you know, like is that I feel like, like it doesn't oh, yeah, happen probably some some voice in my head I'm not going to investigate it or is it like hmm I should probably go see what that is like what is your reaction going to be when I do drop that. I think it's happened enough that she knows that she's not like just hallucinating. Um, I feel like it happens less in space. So she definitely likes flying through space a lot more because, you know, when you're on, on a planet, you know, just going around, you know, there's 
lots of places and people that could have died there. So you're saying she likes to go for yeah. rides? I hate you so goddamn much. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I promise I won't so, make a joke like that again. I'm sorry. So hold on. Are the ghosts with us right now? Are they on my ship? Nerf just like levels his gun for this conversation, <laughs> like nervously. <laughs> They're in the trees. She can't hear you. <laughs> She's um, your mouth moving, but you're gonna have to write that or text it. Uh, I don't know, GM. Are there? Is there a ghost on the ship? You don't hear anything right now. Okay, yeah. Here on Castro, like... a military city. Okay. That probably honors their dead pretty well. Okay, but like on the ship, like. No, we've no, been no. on the sh- we've had the oh. ship for four years, but it's like it's I've actually like- never heard anything on the ship. Okay, all right, yeah, oh, good. 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 good, good, good. Okay. Anytime you've been on the ship, it's been perfect silence. Awesome. Okay, okay. I mean, like you know, like the ghosts aren't always you know terrible. You know, sometimes they've got some like really useful information, and it's it's kind of cool, but like. A lot of the times they just like really want to talk about how they died and it's mm. Mm. kind of creepy. A little but... creepy. Or um, Elwing in chat just said something that caught me in a way that uh, imagine how haunting it would be to have yeah. ghosts be the only thing you've ever heard. Yeah. Like that's uh that, that made my stomach sink a little bit. <laughs> That's actually like, really cool. And then it's like, how do you know red is red? Like, like you know, it's one of those things. It's like, if it's the only thing you've ever heard, how do you know it's not just something else? Like, how do you know? Like, it's creepy. You might just have mind flayers in your head for all you know. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> I hate you so goddamn much. No, because, um, like... I'm I'm sure the I'm sure the Vlaka has um, come into contact with some uh, family members before that have died and were then ghosts. Gotcha. So I like to think passenger is like actively like chasing you around the ship, trying to study you. <laughs> figure out. I, I gave up like, on like it to years figure ago, out, but you'll <laughs> occasionally see me take notes. <laughs> Do like a little uh, data head nod. Hmm. What's that ghost hunter shows? Like like passenger had like a ghost hunter face. <laughs> I don't know. No. I mean, the paranormal investigator doesn't have to be limited to just ghosts. Yeah. You can be like it anything paranormal you want to check out. Fantastical. Yeah. yeah. Aliens. <laughs> George. I, feel, I feel like that's a running joke like just it was aliens guys yes we know it was aliens <laughs> we are the aliens doing this <laughs> okay uh patrick or actually excuse me Jin. did you name the ship looks like it's named the joe lynn oh the, the joe, joe lynn, lynn. So if you named the ship the Joe Lynn, where did what what does that name mean to your character? Or was it just what it was when you got it? It's what it was when I got it. And like one of the first things I says, oh I can't wait to rename this. But I've never had the money. <laughs> Get it repainted. <laughs> Get it repainted, yeah. <laughs> You know, the registries updated. Yeah, it takes money. Okay. Got it. The so what do you tell us when we ask what the name means to you? Because obviously you don't want to tell us you don't have the money to change the name. We were there when he bought it. Oh. So. Yeah, the two of you were. We oh, that's true. It's true. <laughs> I'd like to think that the uh, used car salesman told us it was a Galarian word for uh, good fortune. <laughs> and I believed him. Because I have a 
Checks notes zero to sense motives. Do you not speak Galorian? I do. <laughs> Why would you not. believe that? <laughs> it must be some dialect I don't know about. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. It's, it's ancient Galorian. It's ancient Galorian. Jolin, 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 Jolin. So Please don't take my man. Yeah, it's a it's a deviation of Oathson, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I feel really good about our party and why we're together and who we are as people. Great. Uh, any idea, like, ballpark figure how much I paid for this ship? Um, let's see. You probably took a small family fortune to pay for it. Um, I don't want to give you an actual number because of the way Starfinder wrote its rules on buying ships. Because you can, um, right? Like, that's a thing, right? Yeah, you can buy a ship, but the way the rules, if I remember them correctly, they're very, like, you shouldn't use credits to do this. So, and it's like just, the DM should hand you a ship kind of thing. So let me think on that, and I'll get back to you. Okay. Okay. Because, yeah, but, like... You like the idea that you used a small family fortune to get it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Or, or, I, like, I like to think I'm the golden boy. All right, I'm the golden boy of the family. I'm the golden boy. They. That, that's what you think. Your sense of motive. Uh, <laughs> well, they keep giving me money. Low. <laughs> They're paying you to stay away. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Oh. You chose this first, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, I was looking at on the starjammersrd.com website and there were some rules I found for like homebrewing a vehicle like like quickly building a stat block for a type of vehicle it's like oh I want to go buy a, a Mac or oh I want to go buy a helicopter or whatever and like the rules are like alright this is how you do that and some of the prices there were you know getting close to like 60 70,000 credits so I can only imagine or like here, a military scramjet says that's two hundred and ninety-two thousand credits, right? And that's you just probably paid fight. about a hundred thousand for this thing, I would say, because it's a it's a sizable freighter. If I remember correctly, I think this is like a tier three ship, so it, it's it's above your current level and everything. So it's 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 not bad. It's just old and used. Would you? Yeah. Um, I know you you said like uh, sunk a, a bit of a family fortune on it. What if it was? Um... I keep thinking your character keeps reminding me of like Lannisters and how they always pay their debt. Like, what if it was? What if it was not necessarily a paid transaction, but it was like the merit of your last name, and it, it is how it kind of came to your ownership. And now, like every time you go out and make these mistakes and aren't being profitable, it just kind of looks bad on the family. That could be part of it. I don't talk to them much. Who knows? Okay. We have a ship. It's called the Joe jo Lynn. I'm good. Do we want to try and play? Whether it's non-canonical or canonical? I don't have equipment. Um, if you want in Discord, Let's make sure everybody has their character done. Okay. So first things first, Jim. Is there anything left on your character that needs to be completed? No, I think I'm ready to go. Passenger. Is there anything on your character sheet that needs to be completed? Spells, equipment, um, skill, anything. Let me see. I, I feel like I did have a question. So, the, Creed, you and I talked about this a little bit. Patrick, you and I talked about this a little bit. Do we want to say, are, are we are we final answer that um, healing serums don't work on androids? Nanite patches do? 
since they cost the same? That is a D6 versus D8, just FYI, too. Oh, is there a... The 9 app patch is D6 and the serum is D8. You were saying something, Creed? Sorry. I'm fine with them being different. Just the nanite patch can only heal you if you have some sort of mechanical part. Um, I would say, like, if, let's say, uh, Cryptus, like, you're completely biological right now, the nanites will not work on you. But what if you, like, decide to get this, like, cybernetic arm or whatever and start attaching things to yourself? Okay, then we can start arguing, yeah, the nanites will be effective. But until then, no. Um, same with the healing serum, like your Android, no, you can't use it unless like you start attaching biological things to you, then the healing serum will work on you. Mm -hmm. um, is that simple and logical enough for you guys? It is. I think rules is written. Androids are actually a good deal already. <laughs> biological, it's a, supposed to be like a mix of them. I, I personally, he has to sleep, he has to eat. Yeah, have to sleep, have to eat. If we want to have it be where I can use a healing serum, I'm okay with it. But I, I personally like the drama of either me being almost dead and needing help and us being out of nanite patches but having a healing serum or vice versa. I, I like the idea of there being a, a difference for drama reasons. But other than that, that's the only reason I like the idea. On the plus side, if you took uh, restoring nanites instead of the surging or rebooting, that will help you with healing. I did take, I, t I took repairing. So you can take that feat repairing. multiple times. Um, oh. So if I decide I want surging later, I can. You could take it up to three times. So I'm going to start with repairing. Um, and if I if I understand the rules correctly, I if, if something hits me and it's going to kill me, do I still get my reaction? Something hits you and it's going to kill you. Your reaction would trigger first. I think that is the rules as written. Like, if you have a reaction you can use, that happens before the action that triggered your reaction finishes. Okay, that, that's how I read it as well. And if that's the case, the repairing nanites could actually be pretty useful for me. I could pop back up with one hit point at the beginning of my next turn. Um, for, you know, at the cost of a resolve point. So, yeah, I think I'm good. Um, so, spell resistance, is that a thing that's, like, part of the creatures you're going to throw at us or in the things we fight? Like, do they have... Not early. But but eventually, is, is, it just spell, is it just spell resistance? Yes, spell resistance, no. Is, is that how that works? Is it just a Boolean? Well, because I have decided that I'm not going to bother with it just yet, I wasn't going to take a deep look into it. Okay, got it. Same page. We'll, we'll figure it out as it comes up. Um, AC versus combat maneuvers, is that something that is automatically figured out? Because I don't have a way of putting any numbers in here. It just says mine is 19. I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, Nick, you had brought up AC so, versus combat maneuvers earlier. So AC versus combat maneuvers, is it's the same for NPCs also. So it's eight, the number eight, plus your kinetic armor class. So as an example, my kinetic armor class is 14. So eight plus 14, 22. So that's my AC versus combat maneuver. So if someone bull rushes me, they have to roll higher on their attack roll than 22 to successfully oh, bull rush me. Oh, okay. Got it. Vice versa, if you were bull rushing me, you would have to roll higher on an attack roll than 22. Gotcha. Understood. Got it. Um, I've got my equipment. I did this. I, I was going to just do second skin as my armor and then no clothes over top of it. I have changed my mind on that. Uh, I've got, uh, I've got like a set of like lab equipment, like lab coat, basically. Um, other than that, I think I'm good. I'm, I'm under my encumbrance. Um, what are the penalties if you become encumbered? Anybody know off offhand? If you don't know offhand, I'll look. I think up. you start taking like actual negatives to your role, mm. if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's a bunch of negatives. Yeah, because for those that weren't here for the first episode of this, I have a five for strength, which means my encumbrance is two, and thanks to a backpack, it's actually three. I'm very close to being encumbered already. <laughs> so, the yeah. just probably to be like, "That's that's ridiculous. How did you get that?" Well, he decided to roll. Uh, yes, I did not do point by. Right. I, I rolled dice, and then I also did a dumb thing, uh, which I love doing, 
which is I rolled three dice and didn't remove anything. I just kept what I rolled. So that's how I ended up with a five for strength. Yeah, I have some bad stats too because I, I followed Justin's lead. Whoops. <laughs> Justin's character right. is actually made out of aluminum foil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, uh, I'm into that. Uh, I don't have any questions. I'm, I'm oh. my character. I feel to, good with. So to answer your, oh, to answer your earlier question about encumbered, there are two states of encumbrance. There's encumbered, and then there's overburdened. Encumbered reduces your movement speed by ten. It reduces your maximum dexterity bonus to AC. Um, it also does a minus five penalty to strength and dexterity based checks. So you're less mobile and strong. Overburdened is basically a worse version of that. You're slower and you don't get as much AC bonus from dexterity. Gotcha. All right. Um, my character's done except for languages because I had at close my language because I thought that was the common language of the universe. I was wrong. It's the kind of language of cults and <laughs> dark it evil thing. It is the second most common language. Why? <laughs> and it's the language of cults and... Well, there's plenty of cults in the world. Apparently. Yeah, so... Other than updating that so that I can actually speak with everybody else, I'm good. All right, Ashley. Yeah. Aside from the name of your character, which I'm just kind of place marking as the the Vlacken, or the Vlaka. Am I getting that right? Is that the name of the species? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else do you need to take care of on your character? You know, I've been uh, trying to figure out what my connection is going to be. Okay, well, let's take a look at that, and do you want that to be a discussion? Like, what should be what, or do, do you want any input from any of us? Well, I can't, I can't decide between empath and mellophile. This is part Let of me the mystic it. stuff? Yeah. I'm just going to pull it up so I can look at it with you. Hold on, I got the book right here. All right, so you said you were looking at empath and what? Mellophile. All right, so empath, your connection helps you sense emotions and notice details others can't. You might be a diplomat investigator or a mind reading bodyguard, a ship psychologist, or a psychic con artist. Deities, perception, sense, motive are very good. Um, you get certain spells, certain abilities. Uh, as a full action, you can have sense, motive, read emotions, blah, blah, blah. Mind link, emotion, sense, discern lies. Yeah, uh, empath would be very, very good for any sort of investigator. And what'd you say the other one was called? Mellophile. I think that might be my other one. Uh, I've got it here. You're able to hear the soundless melody that drives all observable astronomical objects in the universe, a resonating delight that brings tears to the eyes of those capable of hearing it. You may be a mathematician seeking to translate a soundless rhythm to audible harmony or traveling minstrel looking to share the so-called songs of the spheres with anyone who will listen. <laughs> so for oh, a that... deaf person... A deaf person that can hear ghosts. And, and it says that it's a soundless melody. I mean, that. Yeah, they both make sense. Yeah. Um, so I guess, what did you want to do? Did you want to have more? Because that second one sounds a little bit more of a, uh, a kind of mystical bard type thing. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you like and you want to do? Yeah. Okay, well, there's yeah. your... Yeah, it's definitely kind of a bard class. It's, it's like, at first level, you get to inspire and give a morale bonus versus empath at first level. You get bonuses for, like, sensing motive and bluff and... Um... Yeah, the, the empath is more of, like... Your typical gumshoe, like like you're actually like trying to read minds of like real people, but this other one sounds like it's more of a you're investigating more of the supernatural. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think that kind of fits well. Like you, you kind of take it into like a musical sense. 
Yeah, and also you get some spells with Melophile, like uh, like uh, Clairvoyance. That's it's kind of up there in the the realm of being. Well, she she would have gotten that either way. Oh. Because Empath gets it too. Gotcha. All right. Is that um? Are you going with that, or you still want to think about it? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Melophile. Can can you spell that for me? I, I still don't know exactly what I'm hearing. M E L O. Oh, like e melody, like melody file. Got it, melody file. Yeah. Cool. Hey, actually going archaic and having the actual books around. Okay, what else did you need for your character? Have you still got spells to select? Equipment, skills. I got my skills. I don't have equipment. I don't have spells. All right, so let's go through and get those things. So let's find, let's do skills first. Wait, hold on, hold on, please. Hold let's on. find out what your class skills are. Patrick, can you uh, kind of walk us through? I, I've got skills. I've already got skills. I'm good oh, on skills. Um, yeah. Equipment and spells. Yeah. So let's go through equipment. So, I sent you some generic equipment, Ashley, on um, Discord. Mm -hmm. That might be a good starting place. It's a good setup. <clears throat> so it actually saves you. It's not actually that expensive. So... Some of the stuff I would, if you want to change out for your own flavoring, is the ranged and melee weapons. I've given you a pulse caster pistol and a tactical baton, which are very basic weapons. But if there are other weapons you want, that you have a lot of money to work with. Captain Jin only wanted you to have a station flight suit. I had a second, <laughs> second station skin, wear. Station wear. Um, but you can choose between a little stronger second skin or much cheaper, less strong station flight suit. <laughs> Let me know if you see the uh, screenshot I, I sent I you. I see it. I see uh, it. Um... So the only thing you really have to think about is if you want to focus on spells or you want to focus on your weapons, you probably want to focus on spells though. Looks like I'll run you through this equipment list, what this stuff does. It's all very kind of basic. Um, Serum of healing is a healing potion. The R2E is a basic meal pack, just some food, granola bars. Your field ration is uh, frozen granola bars that we will have to fix. <laughs> a personal comm unit is just a little radio. A hygiene kit, which is weirdly heavy, you know, <laughs> it's for grooming yourself. Flashlight, fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher is kind of fun in Starfinder because you can use it to actually propel yourself around in space. If you get stuck in space, it is a propellant. So we keep those on our belts at all times for when we get sucked out of the ship at random notice. Titanium cable is just rope. A consumer backpack is a fashionable backpack that lets you carry more stuff. We've given you some clothing. The one thing that you'll want to think about is toolkit. So you probably want two toolkits, and toolkits help you with a specific skill. So like I have an engineering toolkit to help me when I'm bashing the ship's engines. Um, but if you have like two skills that you really like, you probably want to pick up the toolkit for them. Yeah, it's way more than a uh, normal 5e equipment. Say hi, please. Hello, black cat. Yeah, say hi. Please. You're on TV. You're on TV. You gotta say hi. Let's make a baby. <laughs> Ow, that's my so flesh. Like, what are your highest skills currently? Uh. Wisdom and charisma. Um, so the skills, the piloting, engineering skills. Oh, what? Um, diplomacy, mysticism, perception, 
profession, sense motive, survival. Wait, why do I have survival? Why did I do survival? So we want to get you a... I guess I, I got survival, I guess. We want to give you a, a toolkit for profession. I'm pretty sure there isn't a diplomacy toolkit unless it's like wine. <laughs> a wine bottle to share with your friend. But yeah, um, I know it's a lot at ran you know randomly thrown at you, but is there anything you, like, do you want to look up weapons that are different or you just want to keep this generic list? I think I, I, I just need some time to the generic list is a good place to start, and then I think we'll probably do first session one next Friday. Creed, are you good to do session one next Friday? I know you're moving. It, be. it will. It'll have to be a little later because, um, I mean, I, I it would actually be better for me to do Saturdays. But if we're doing next Friday, it would have to be later in the night because I will be closing this next week. Saturday's good for me. I like Saturdays. Saturday works. Good for me. Okay. So um, that'll give you some time to, from now till then to just kind of fully figure out your items. Um, did you want to take a look at spells together as a group too and just get an idea as to what some of those are? Because I will tell you, spells threw me for a loop today. The, the, the spells, even the ones that have similar names, like I ended up going with Magic Missile, it functionally works a fair amount different than it does in like D&D 5th edition. Um, at least in the way that it doesn't scale up quite the same. So if we want to look at some of that together to kind of round out the rest of this this session, uh, we can probably close on that and then look to do session one next Saturday. I, I don't really care so much about knowing what each individual spell does, but how does it work different than D&D &D, like, as a thing? spellcasting in general yeah my understanding is it works almost exactly the same it just each individual spell might be different yeah some of the individual spells are different so maybe i wasn't super clear there there is th there is a mechanic called spell resistance uh which if you're if a creature and it's apparently for mostly like higher level character um yeah, creatures. i'm not going to be using that for yeah. a while but that's like you have to make a roll to see if your spell even affects the creature kind of a thing um but overall, it works mostly the same. Like, some of them will have two hits where you, you're going to roll your dice as if it were attacks. Uh, and some are going to have where they have to make a, um, a save, uh, whether it's, you know, dex, fort, or... Is it just the three saves, by the way? Reflex, fortitude, and will? That's it? I think so. Oh, okay. So. So, yeah. Spells, probably, you know, using an action, using a material component, verbal, somatic. I believe that's all still there from fifth edition um and don't worry so much about spell resistance just yet i am not going to tackle that until i'm comfortable with other things so right now your spell works as described on the spell description until we've played several sessions and we're all a little bit more comfortable and i'm more comfortable rolling out spell resistance and other things that 5e doesn't have <laughs> That makes me feel better because uh, I've never played a spellcaster. Please remember, uh, this is still new to me too. I've only played the one session, and um, it was all it, that was all Starship Combat, which I'm not even going to start first. So uh, understand that your DM is learning this the same as you, and I'm going to use what I'm comfortable with, which is probably going to be what you're comfortable with because we're all coming from fire. That's that makes me feel better. Well, then, is there anything else we wanted to do tonight, then? So, do you guys, if you guys want to do, like, a little combat um, or no, it's up to you. I think we should probably save play till next session. I think that's a great idea. So, um, next session, we will start out at a spaceport, and the captain, I will get with him on the what the job is, and I'll have some more typed up things ready to go. So cool. I'm into that. I'm, cur I'm curious to see how much roll 20 hates me. So I'm just doing a D 20 type. Eh, average. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. All right. So we've got our OCD Android. We've got a broken prideful captain. We've got our former soldier. Who's a, 
Uh, a little ashamed he didn't do as well as he wanted to. Uh, we've got a Vlaka on uh, on a lot of meds. Ship named the Joe Lynn. We're on Castravel. And we're, we've been together for four, four years, uh, bouncing around Guardians of the Galaxy style, trying to make our way in the world. Yeah, not, not really making any money, not really having too exciting adventures just yet. Until, yet. Uh, the adventures will be exciting. Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. I did promise you all that. <laughs> <laughs> did you? <laughs> um, all right, let's go ahead and wrap up here, and uh, we'll look to play next Saturday. So... Uh, do we have an idea as to what time next Saturday? So I can go ahead and update um, the Twitch. I don't know what I don't want to want to say it on screen, but um, probably around the same time, unless we can swing meeting in person, which I don't know how everyone feels about. Um, but if not, it'll probably be around the same. Time. Okay, tentatively around eight o'clock Saturday. Awesome. For those of you who who stuck around with us during our technical difficulties and and sat in to watch us talk about this game that's uh, infinitely more complicated than, or at least feels infinitely more complicated than D&D 5th Edition. Uh, thank you so very much. We're very excited to play, uh, and we will very shortly. Uh, uh, follow and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like, do you do the YouTube thing with Twitch? I honestly have no idea. Um, but anyways, thank you, Elwing Twitch and Wither King. I can't express enough how incredible it is that we have these two fans that have been here for two or three episodes. Like, I don't have words for how cool that is. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to actually see us play. So, <laughs> oh, and it's coming. That's when they'll leave. <laughs> That's when they'll leave. <laughs> uh, we do have another show called Dungeon Chat, which is just us talking, if you hate the way we play. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that will pick up. I think after yeah, that'll, our that'll ask year starts back up. Yeah, once our fifth edition starts back up, June seventh, um, in person, then we'll go back to doing dungeon chats as well, and then we'll have three shows running, and that's incredible to me. So yeah, right. good. Uh, everybody, say bye. Adios, bye everybody. Bye. bye. How do I turn this thing yeah. off? Where's the button? <laughs> <laughs>